In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, let us continue with the reading of the Spiritual Meadow by St. John Moscus. Today, let us say a short prayer. O Heavenly King, comfort a spirit of truth who, whatever were present, and fillest all things, treasury of good things, and giver of life, come and dwell in us, and cleanse us of all impurity, and save our souls, O Good One. Chapter 4. The Vision of Abba Leontius. Abba Leontius, or the community of our Holy Father Theodosius, told us, After the new Lavriotis were driven out of the new Lavra, I went and took up residence in the same Lavra. One Sunday I went to the church to make my communion, and when I went in I saw an angel standing at the right side of the altar. When I had received communion I went back to my cell, and the voice came to me, saying, From the moment that altar was consecrated, I was commanded to remain there. The only thing here I would like to say is the fact that uh, the word lavra is usually used for a cenobitic monastery, a monastery where monks live together and share everything in common. And we hear Abba Leontius describing in his vision that he saw the angel who was consecrating or sort of from the moment of consecration was appointed to stand by the altar of the monastery's church. And of course, that gives us a great degree of consolation because we know that in every church that we go to, that we pray, every church that is properly consecrated has a guardian angel that looks after that church and all the people praying in it. Chapter 5. Abba Polychronius' Story of the Three Monks Abba Polychronius told us, I saw one of the brothers at the Lavra of the Towers of Jordan, who was not keeping himself to the mark, for he never fulfilled the sun, his Sunday duties. Then, some time later, I saw this man who had formerly been so lax, devoting himself with all diligence and great zeal. So I said to him, Now you are doing well, brother, and looking after your own soul. He said to me, Abba, I am about to die, sir. And three days later he was dead. This same Polychronius, priest of the new Lavra, also told me this. Once, whilst I was staying at the Lavra of the Towers, one of the brothers died. The steward said to me, Of your charity, brother, come so we can carry that brother's effects into the storeroom. As we began to move his things, I saw the steward weeping. I said to him, Come now, Abba, why are you weeping in this way, sir? He replied, Because today I am carrying out the brother's effects, and two days from now... Others shall bear away mine. And so it was. Two days later, the student, the steward sorry, himself died, just as he said. This particular story illustrates two very important points. The first is that we must prepare for death and make an extra effort before dying, hopefully God allowing us to keep a reasonable mind so that we stand before God in the best possible state of mind, heart and soul. Now, the second is the fact that we see exhibited by the brothers of that monastery a certain gift that we rarely see now, although some people do get an idea that they are approaching death. And of course, those who are terminally ill oftentimes know, but maybe not down to the day or definitely maybe not down to the hour of when they will die. But the monks, the pious monks who struggled, who prayed to God, their entire sort of monastic life to be properly prepared for death, oftentimes they were shown by God their last hour and their last day so that they may properly prepare themselves. I think it is significant that in the church we say a Christian ending to our life, peaceful, uh, 
Painless, blameless, and to good defense before the dread judgment seat of Christ, let us ask. Now, that is the petition that is repeated at, I would say, the majority of the daily cycle of services. It is said at Vespers, it is said at Matins, it is said at Great, uh, it, it is said also said at the Liturgy. Maybe not some of the other smaller services and not at the private services, but most definitely at Vespers, at Ma so evening prayer, Matins, morning prayer, and of course the liturgy. And so as we pray for God to give us a Christian ending to our life, we can bear in mind the example of these wonderful monks who made an extra effort at the approach of death to present themselves pure and blameless before God and who for their ascetic labors were often revealed uh, to by God the day any hour in which they would pass, so that they would prepare. O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, through the prayers of thy most pure mother, of our holy and God-bearing fathers, of our holy and God-bearing father, John,